Hey everyone and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Diana and I'm a 23 year old stay at home mom to my three kids. I have a son and two daughters. Today I am going to be talking about the birth of my second daughter, Amelia. She ended up being a emergency slash unplanned c-section i'm not sure exactly what you would call it but um yeah so here we go she was a healthy baby during pregnancy she was all fine there is nothing wrong and um we found out she was a girl about 14 no it was 15 or 16 weeks around that and we were really excited I I don't know why I just like thought I was gonna have a bunch of boys after I had my son so it was a surprise to have a girl and I was excited we had just moved to a new state things just were really going great in our life and things they still are everything's fine but um it was a special time but at the same time it was the COVID outbreak it was 2020 my daughter was born in January 2021 so my whole pregnancy was in 2020 where it was really strict COVID lockdown and it was quite the ride I guess <laughs> so I guess I'll fast forward to the end of my pregnancy and I was going into my like 38 39 week checks those went fine they're like well 39 weeks you're fine I I think I skipped out on the cervical check because I just don't really I didn't think it was necessary so anyway i go home i'm home for a few days i get past 40 weeks and i'm like okay when i get past 40 weeks i'm like oh man like it's like something in your head for me at least it's like okay well i have to have my baby now i had my son at 40 weeks pretty much to the day like on his due date it was like the day after but it was actually like four in the morning so pretty much his due date was just feeling like something was wrong a lot and she wasn't moving as much i just was having a lot of anxiety like that something was wrong i had a really big belly like way bigger than with my son and it was so weird because I thought I would have her early you know because I had a big belly and I'm like oh like maybe my due date like is off and she's just like ahead and she'll be born early but nope not how it happened babies like I learned this with my third that babies when like what triggers labor is your the baby's position it's not like how big your baby is or like due dates or you can like do everything in the world but if your baby's not in the right position you're like you're not gonna go into labor and i wish i had known that because maybe things would have gone different but they didn't and it's okay because things happen and my my baby girl is alive and healthy and fine so i call my midwife and i ask to come in be checked i feel like i'm having slightly decreased fetal movement but that's normal at the end of your pregnancy and i just like felt some like something was wrong and thankfully i, I had a really caring midwife and she listened so I come in and she checks me and it's all good. She checks the heart rate and she didn't really like what she was hearing. So she decided to do a non-stress test for me. And I go in to the room, they strap me up. They, uh, the non-stress test is like, they just like monitor your baby for a few minutes or whatever they need 
to like measure contractions and stuff. Just like see how the baby is doing with contractions. And, and she was not doing good at all. Uh, her, like within like a minute, 30 seconds maybe, she, the doctor like comes, midwife comes back in and she's like, okay, I'm not liking what I'm seeing. I wanna send you over to the hospital to get induced. And I'm like, okay, whoa, like I was not expecting to hear that because it's just like, everything has been going so good up until this point and things can just turn around and like go wrong in a second. And so my husband and my son are sitting out in the car waiting for me to come back and like be like, oh, everything's fine. Nope, I have to call him, say, all right, we have to go over to the hospital. We're having a baby today. So my husband has to call up his mom. His mom comes and gets my son, takes him back home. And my husband and I, well, actually, yeah, we had to go to the hospital with my son. And they're like, you can't have him here. But she came and picked him up then. And yeah, they get me all checked in and it was like going fine. I, I had, I was like having contractions, like kind of like going into labor, but not really. They ended up using what they call a, it's a Foley ball to, they put it up in you. It's like a balloon and they, it's to dilate your cervix and that, it like falls out once it's done the job and it usually takes like several hours for that and they like did that it fell out in like 30 minutes and so i went into labor on my own after that so that was their natural induction thing which worked out great i was happy about that and um i was progressing i was able to walk the halls because they had a monitor on me where I wasn't connected to the machine. It was like a Wi-Fi one, really interesting. And um, it was all good. They were like, it was like getting to be a few hours and they're like, do you want us to break your water? Like to have things progress. And I know that like once you break your water, it goes very fast from that point. So they, um, I agree and I say yes, even though like maybe I wasn't aware of like the risk and stuff. Usually it goes fine when you do that. But anyway, they, they, uh, my midwife, she comes in, she breaks my water. And as she's doing that, she like is, lets out a distressed like sigh like uh -huh. oh no like not she didn't say like oh no she was just like she like put her head down and she like she had her hand in there like on her the baby's head because she was like against my cervix and she's like ah oh. like she like knew from that point like it was things are messed up like it's not gonna be okay anymore and and I'm like, what, what's wrong? Like what happened? And she was saying that she, her head like slipped out of position. So they had me after that, like moving around, trying to like, I was leaning on the ball, like trying to get back into, like get her back into a good position. It wasn't working. Her this throughout the entire labor her heart rate would drop with contractions and it only got worse the farther i progressed her heart rate would drop more and more and more and they didn't like that they were mon uh, monitoring me very closely about that so she um I didn't, I don't know if I said this before, but I didn't have an epidural. I was doing this natural, so I'm in a lot of pain. They broke my water. I'm progressing a lot. 
and uh i i'm like i say to the nurse when she comes in i have a lot of pressure and i i feel like i need to push or something so she is like okay and she checks me and it wasn't that feeling that i was feeling it was her hand her hand was stuck in my birth canal and she immediately pulls her hand out she was not even like up into my cervix like she had already i don't know like her hand was about to come out first which it's not good i'm not sure what they call that like in medical terms but yeah all the after this is where i almost go like blank i i it's like just some sort of bad dream but in the end i get my beautiful baby so it's a good dream in the end i all the doctors and nurses and stuff they rush in they're trying to put her back in a a good position because she can't come out hand first she could a lot of bad things could happen they were just they were telling me a lot of stuff they were scaring me quite a bit but maybe they were scared i don't know they're medical professionals they should know how to handle it i don't know maybe it just scared me but i, I had no pain medicine they're like trying their sticking their hands and stuff up there trying to put her back in a good position it wasn't working her heart rate at this point was really dropping i hear the nurses and they're like stop wait like heart rate's dropping too much and my husband is probably i i wish like i could have like seen his reaction to all of this like i'm sure i know how he's feeling but in that moment i'm like sitting there screaming like they're doing all this and like it wasn't working so they start talking about you should you should have a c-section at this point that like this is gonna be the best outcome like her heart rate's dropping her hand is like coming out her she's not in the right position if you you can you can continue to like try and give birth this way but likely not gonna be a good outcome and like I I it wasn't that important to me to have a natural birth that I would risk her being harmed so of course I say yes to a c-section so about like 10 15 maybe even shorter amount why when you're in labor i feel like your like concept of time just you don't like <laughs> i feel like i can't like i don't know how, how much time has passed or not um they wheel me into the or and they do the spinal something that did annoy me it was uh the What's it called? Anesthesio anesthesiologist. Okay, I didn't say the word right, but it's like, uh, this girl doesn't have an epidural, I'm assuming. He's like, like, because I'm like in pain, crying. It's like, yeah, I can tell. Like, okay, rude. Aren't you supposed to be compassionate? But, okay. Um, they get the spinal done and they are able to get her out probably i don't know 10 15 minutes later when they start your c-section the getting the baby part out is very fast that they get that baby out fast i was able to do like they didn't have to knock me out or anything. That's why I wasn't sure if you would call it a emergency C-section or unplanned, because it wasn't, that wasn't my plan, obviously. So I like to call it an unplanned because when there's women that have to have an emergency C-section and they have to knock the 
woman out and that sounds extremely scary to me and they also were telling me like that's a like risk if we don't do this right now you might have to go under and I that's not what I wanted at all no way that's because I wanted to see my baby be born and when they pull her out the cord is around her neck twice tight 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 like that's why her heart rate would drop into the 50s when I would have a contraction so they um they take her out and they're like doing everything they do when a baby's born I can't hold her because my arms are like strapped down when you have a c-section I know some women choose to do that and that's fine but for me I never want to have to go through that again so my midwife is in there and she comes up to me and she's like congratulations you want to guess how big she is and I say eight pounds and she's like nope she's nine pounds and four ounces and I'm like well I guess that explains why my belly was so big and yeah it was just it was relieving to know that like she's born she's safe she's out and my husband's holding her and I... well here she is <laughs> she's a big two-year-old now she just woke up from her nap she's feeling kind of sick so mm, i'm gonna hold her for the rest of this video so she was born everything was great Daddy was holding you. And I said how beautiful she is. She's our first little girl. So, um, I think honestly, the hardest part about it all was the recovery. The recovery time is so long. I think like, even, like, nobody really understood like how bad it actually felt when i was like going through that recovery like it's not the same as having like a, a baby i had my third baby was a v-back and i had her in november 2022 so that birth Mommy. was amazing i would rather the recovery everything i i got right out of bed it was amazing i want to do a, um, a video about that too let me know if you guys want to hear it because it's like after that traumatic birth i got a beautiful natural feedback after that it was it was really good that I, I I studied, I like researched about tons of stuff in lots of Facebook groups and it ended up being great. I am happy. I got that cat. What? I got that cat. <laughs> and so we stayed in the hospital for about a day and a half, maybe two days. They let me go pretty fast, but that, it was just really, like, Mom. I, we bring Amelia home to our little buddy, Asher, and he sees her, he loves her, and they still love each other. You were just a little baby, Amelia, a little tiny baby. And she did not fit newborn clothes. I think she fit them for maybe like an hour. And then all of a sudden she grew out of them. So she was a very long baby. I think she was 21 and a half inches long. Ooh, she's really tall now too. Um, 
So, yeah, we brought her home. And everything was fine. Right? Do you remember being born? Turtle and Carl. Well, thank you everybody for watching my birth story and I I wanted to mainly make this video so other women can watch and either relate or if they're having a c-section like they can watch it you'll be okay if you need to do one I just wanted to share my experience it's it's kind of like traumatizing for me honestly like thinking about it, it it's hard because in that moment it's so scary but first like sit down and talk video so we're sitting by the window so the cars are driving by a car wait I go in the car and we want it. So, just like that car got to I, I think my biggest piece of advice to anyone who is, it doesn't matter what kind of birth you're having, is to really educate yourself. When I was having my first. I, like I was told like take birthing classes and stuff and I didn't do it and my first birth ended up being fine anyway like it all went good I think I could have like maybe like stood up for myself a little bit more but I was young and not really thinking about it enough I I plan to make a video about my VBAC, which is a very positive outcome story. So let me know if you guys would like to see that. I'll try to get that done sometime. It's hard when we have three little kids to sit down and make a video, right? Okay, you wanna say bye? Bye bye everyone and thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for us. Like one. <laughs> like and subscribe. Bye bye. Bye bye.